I'm John Furrier with SiliconAngle.com. And I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. And we're here with Amar Awadala and, and Mr. McDougal from, uh, from, from VMworld. Uh, VMware. Uh, VMware. So this Welcome is this VMware. is our big data panel spotlight number one. We're going to have another afternoon session with uh, some other big data gurus. But we have uh, the conversation that's hot in cloud is big data. So Amr Awadala, co-founder of Cloudera, the hottest startup in Silicon Valley around big data, the market leaders in commercializing Hadoop. Amr, welcome back to the Cube. You're a Cube alumni. You've been with us at Strata. And uh, you've yeah, been in the cube you. in our office, your office. But, but actually. I can barely hear you. <laughs> you can barely but, hear me. Yeah, maybe you can speak up a little. Okay, I'll speak I'm up a little. I'm hearing you delayed from over there. But okay, you got to try to try to hold it together. Yeah. Uh, Richard, welcome to the cube. Thank you. Okay, so first question, Amr. Um, big data. How has VMware changed over the years? from a virtualization company now to a pure on cloud company. That's a, that's a question for me or for, for Steve? You, for, for you. <laughs> from your perspective as an entrepreneur, you're pioneering software, you know about virtualization. Yeah, yeah. What do you see changing? What do you expect to hear? Uh, how do I expect VMware to change going forward or well, what's, how what's did they change, change already? How they change and what do you expect to hear from them? I mean, I mean VMware is changing beyond just uh, the uh, the, the raw virtualization layer, we see them growing into layers above that, right? So we saw that with the acquisition of Zimbra and with the acquisition of uh, JBoss, right? Or no, no, Spring Source. Spring, Spring, Source. Spring Source. Yes. So we can see how they're, they're growing beyond just the, the virtualization at the lowest layer. Uh, re regardless of that, storage is very important at both of these layers. Uh, I, I have traditionally have seen VMware focus more on uh, storage for the virtual machines uh, using storage air networks and central storage. And uh, I predict that over the next few years that's going to change. And they will be using uh, more of uh, storage on the servers themselves. Richard, so the question for you is, uh, I wrote a post about OpenStack this morning and how VMware's cloud plans are putting possibly the damper on things like OpenStack, which is open source, where the emphasis on d is on delivery and on commercialization and high grade quality reliability. So, so how is VMware rolling out, uh, continuing to roll out in the enterprise when you have to deal with open source frameworks and software development environments? I think open source is actually really good because it helps drive the ecosystem of the tooling and community above it. Um, but I think if you look at some of the core values that you need in this growing world, especially in the big data world, people want big data with strong isolation, with resource controls. They'd love to be able to share the same cloud infrastructure for big data and other workloads at the same time. So some of the core features that have gone into the product around resource management, strong isolation, all those types of capabilities will um, really enable people to, to leverage um, that level of isolation uh, on, the, on the platform. So if you look sort of deeper in the platform, I think a lot of the core values that have been in the vSphere platform are really able to be exploited now for um, some, of the, some of the needs around the big data platform. And I think that's, that's a, there's a lot of differentiation in the platform in that little bit. So Amr, we, we look at the trending items in, inside the, uh, the Twitter sphere and what's going on in the marketplace. Obviously Hadoop and big data is very hot. What are the things that you're seeing that enterprises really want in, in big data? And how does that relate to their cloud play, their cloud strategy or cloud possibilities? Yeah, I mean Hadoop, Hadoop and big data in many, in many ways are about cloud, right? I mean, if you define cloud, cloud is about uh, essentially having a resource that's scalable that can do your bidding. Right, and in, in in many ways, Hadoop enables you to do that when it comes to big data. Right, so if you have lots of data uh, that you want to have lots of flexibility and agility and scalability in terms of processing, that's exactly what Hadoop offers to you. Uh, so uh, what we're seeing is uh, three three kind of major trends I'm seeing that are making Hadoop become so hot today. The first one is actually a behavioral one, and that's where organizations actually want to be more agile. They want to be more adaptive. And uh, they want to be locked into a given language to query your data or locked into a given schema in which they have to present their data. And Hadoop, Hadoop gives them that freedom, essentially. Gives them that agility. The second two important trends are the commodity hardware trends, right? So uh, now we have commodity hardware. We have boxes in which we can have uh, multiple cores and multiple disks. Um, and that allows us to push a lot of the computation and scale our big data processing much more than we have ever been able to before. I'll just tell him to just okay. lean back a little so we can see back and forth. Um, so what's your uh, view of big data? I see VMware has to put in uh, commercial opportunities. So what do you, what do you counter that with Amr? Yeah, I, I agree with Amr. Uh, big data is a very important. Customers are realizing they can unlock a lot of value from the data and they're starting to invest in a diverse set of big data platforms. Hadoop is definitely growing like crazy in our customer base. And the interest level around Hadoop and the community around it is very substantial. 
So um, I think if you touch on some of the things that Amma raised around agility, people want to be able to deploy Hadoop on the existing inf cloud infrastructure they have very quickly. And so if you actually mix things like Hadoop with a cloud infrastructure, you get agile Hadoop where you can deploy on-demand Hadoop instances for analytics rather than having to uh, go and set up a, or wait three months and go and set up a very specific cluster for that specific purpose. So um, I have to ask, because this is something that we're following very closely at SiliconANGLE, is the whole HP debacle around computer, uh, their PC division and some of their moves. The world is going towards commoditization of PCs and servers, which is one of the things why Hadoop is so powerful and the capabilities are enabling. Um, HP and these big server guys are also big customers of VMware. What, how does that all shake out? Do you think it's just natural evolution? Will they, how, how are they going to adjust? They're your partners. At the same time, the commodity trend is rapidly accelerating at to the, all the way to the edge to inside the core data centers. I think what it'll do is it'll take, change the shape um, of configurations of platforms that are used. So Hadoop is about using commercial platform, off-the-shelf off platforms for both compute and for storage. And so I think we will see initial amount of Hadoop being deployed on virtual clouds on top of things like uh, infrastructure SANs but I think we'll see a commoditization of the storage layer as well. So Hadoop can take a lot of small, a lot of machines with local storage and cluster those together um, and then produce um, high performance computing and large data storages on top of that as well. So I think, I think that's the next big thing to come is sort of the change in the way that storage is provisioned and a, probably a five or 10X reduction in cost in the uh, cost per gigabyte of acquiring storage for big data. The one question I want to ask, and I'll, I'll let Dave, Dave ask a few questions is to Amr and, and Richard is, what are the customers saying? to you guys. What are the customers saying to you about what they're looking for? In a way, they're inventing the future with you guys, right? Mm -hmm. So, in a way, a lot of the things that they need, they don't know yet. As you said once, uh, you've seen the future and you, you're, you're out there, you're inventing That, that, that was three years ago I was saying <laughs> that, right? So, Caldera started three years ago. So, okay, let's get down to yeah. uh, our theme. Uh, our theme is reality, delivering product. It's hard, you got to have quality. So what are the customers in, like right now? What are they asking for? What do you think they need? And how are you guys looking at rolling out this out to customers? We've been sort of looking at our customers in, you're either test, dev, you're small to medium, or you're one of the super hard, uh, super, super, super huge um, birthing customers of Hadoop, where you're trying to roll out five or 10,000 nodes of Hadoop. I think in the, in the small to medium um, development and test environments, what people are asking for is that we have this cloud infrastructure, we have um, infrastructure in place, we'd love to be able to deploy Hadoop quickly on top of that. And we'd like to be able to share the platform with other workloads. So for example, if I've got this, uh, this, these 100 nodes at night, I'd love to be able to use those for Hadoop when I'm not running my main, main data center applications on that same platform. So time sharing and doing elastic to do on top of existing infrastructure that I would, that I would time share with other more critical workloads. Can be able to separate Are you out. worried about the fracturization of Hadoop? I mean, obviously everyone's coming out their own flavor. It seems to be the trend. I have a version of Hadoop. You got MapR, you got competing different uh, versions of MapReduce and other rewrites going on. And how, how does that all shake out for you guys? Or do you, do you care? We sort of view Hadoop, and we do care, because if we look at a lot of the work we're doing around, around PaaS and Cloud Foundry, um, at the upper level, we have application stack, and you have developers inter interfacing with those application frameworks. And so Hadoop sort of looks like two pieces of software. It's, it's a developer framework, which the big data developers can write MapReduce and other tools on top of. And then it's a bunch of system software at the back end. So there's system software for scheduling and storage and all the other pieces. And so I think it's likely that there'll be more work integrating uh, the system software with the virtualization platform. And in the future, there might be more work going on around uh, integrating Hadoop with PaaS frameworks to sort of try and take a, a different approach to that. So, so if I can answer your question, uh, I mean, uh, the one about the customers and what the customers are asking for. Uh, so so uh, essentially, there's two things customers are asking for right now that we're focused on at Caldera. One is scalability of people. So I mean, Hadoop is very good at scaling uh, processing, right? Uh, however, how can we get one system admin to be able to manage 1,000 nodes, 10,000 nodes? So Cloudera, over the last couple of years, we've been focused on the Cloudera management suite, and the Cloudera management suite essentially attacks that problem. It allows one system administrator, Hadoop administrator, to be able to scale their uh, capacity to manage hundreds, if not thousands, of nodes. Uh, towards that end, we launched also Cloudera, uh, C the CMS uh, Express, SEM Express, and SEM Express brings down the level of knowledge that you need so that even a C our CEO was able to install Hadoop using it. So that's the first dimension, is how can we bring down the administration, deployment, configuration of Hadoop to the normal system administrator. The, the other one is integration with existing enterprise infrastructure. 
Uh, so customers want to make sure that they can continue to use Hadoop with the stuff they have today. Uh, so along that line, uh, Cloudera has been working on many integrations with industry partners. Some of the big ones are the Dell relationship we announced, uh, announced very recently. Uh, MicroStrategy is another one on the BI front. Uh, Informatica on the ETL front. We also launched a partner exchange program, uh, very similar actually to what uh, VMware has, to allow many of the partner ecosystem players to start building their own integrations to work directly with Hadoop. But these are the biggest two uh, areas of focus right now for us. So Amr, I wonder if you could comment on the other part of John's question, which related to the competition. When we met last in, uh, at Strata in February, we, I had asked you, what about competition? You said, well, there really isn't any. And since then, we've come out of the woodworks. You've seen EMC and Greenplum, you've seen, in, in a way, Nexus Lexus, you've seen Hortonworks. So yeah. I want you, if you could comment on that. Sure. And then the second part of my question is, a lot of the competitors are saying that Hadoop is not uh, enterprise ready. And, and I'd like to give you an opportunity to comment on that, because I know we've talked in the past how hard you're working on yeah, yeah. You know, that problem. You, you may understand it better than anybody. So in first, Talk a little bit about the competition, um, what your thoughts are on that, and then let's talk about, you know, is Hadoop Enterprise ready? Sure. So, uh, in regards to competition, you're right. I mean, a couple of years ago, three years ago, it was just us, right? We were the only ones saying, hey, this is going to be huge. And nobody was believing us. We told them, this is going to be a major movement. As you said, we saw the future. This is going to change the way uh, data storage and processing is done. So, we, we have three years of headway compared to anybody else in the industry right now. And that's materialized in lots of customers that we have across many industries that we know how they use this technology and we know what their needs are and what we need to develop for them. Uh, so yes, there's other solutions out there that, that will try to do it one way or another. Any major movement, any major new technology wave will have many, many players appear as soon as the market proves to be a hot market. Many players will appear. Few will survive uh, after the wave is done. Cloudera will be number one in that space, I assure yeah. you. Now, in terms of the, the enterprise, ready piece. Uh, yeah. enterprise readiness and enterprise maturity, uh, that's, as I just said a few minutes ago, that's our one of our biggest areas of focus right now. And, uh, Hadoop is not there yet. It's getting there very quickly. We're uh, deploying lots of uh, resources behind that effort, and we will be there. You have to keep in mind that Hadoop is only seven years old. So it's not that old as technology compared to VMware, 15 years old, database technology is 30 years old, 40 years old. So it's getting there, it's getting there, but it's going to take time. So I have a question for both you guys around um, something I, I was talking privately with our team, we haven't really written anything about it yet, um, is the democratization of IT. So you know, obviously with social, web, democratization of media, blogging, we're all doing that and we're doing live right now. But we're seeing that trend, you mentioned ease of use for the system admin. There's a democratization, you're seeing federation in clouds, so it should be as easy as a business analyst saying, hey, I can improve my company's business by using, say, big data, or I have systems resources out there, and configure it, roll their own, and literally not have to go through the IT process of chain of command, or at least make it easier. So, is this a real trend in your mind, this democratization of IT? Um, want I don't want to call it consumerization, it's more of, hey, enabling someone who can make change and, and drive revenue or reduce costs at the same time. So mm -hmm. we'll start with you. Do you think that's true? No, absolutely, I think what that's going to happen at two layers. First is at the uh, cloud infrastructure layer. Our job is to make these Hadoop distributions run as best as they can on the cloud layer. And you don't want to have to have a business unit thinking about, do I have to go and uh, request or deploy Hadoop? It should be a matter of like, I know I've got a cloud, that's a matter of a set of resource pools, I know what it's going to cost me, I can just go and request those dynamically and use it. And then at a higher level on top of Hadoop, you would expect Hadoop to head more towards um, very simple, in support of what um, Amo was saying, very simple, multi-tenant, uh, self-service Hadoop. So once you've got a cloud infrastructure, then you can say, I want to use Hadoop, this particular job's going to need 100 nodes, um, give me that straight away. And you shouldn't have to have an interaction with a systems group or a systems platform to get that job done. Yeah, so I mean, totally agree. Uh, the both, I mean, cloud uh, the virtualization technologies like VMware and uh, data processing technologies like Hadoop scalable ones that can grow to many, many nodes are adding, are allowing the layman person to do things they just couldn't do before. And we are seeing startups come up left and right that, that are uh, changing the way things are done that wouldn't have been possible without these technologies. And also pub uh, cloud, uh, public cloud technologies like Amazon EC2 as well. So. Uh, uh, for example, a very good uh, example startup I like to mention is AdMob. AdMob is a mobile advertising company that uh, now run by Google. Sorry, now well, Google. yeah, was acquired <laughs> by Google by for 800 million or so, and that company wouldn't exist without technologies like Hadoop and the virtualization. They just wouldn't exist. How are uh, VMware and Cloudera working together? Are you, any, can you share with us any specifics there? 
Um, I, I don't know if we're going to too much specific. I, uh, we are definitely doing uh, performance testing of Hadoop on the VMware platform. And so we've done uh, moderate scale performance testing and we had a lot of concern with customers about big data workloads. In the past there was a lot of questions about things like Oracle and big data databases and we spent a lot of time showing we can run those well. And in the, it, now we've been turning our attention to uh, big data platforms like Hadoop and so we have lab, we have machines and we're running um, Hadoop at moderate scale and showing that we can get uh, single digit overheads, so very low overheads with uh, virtualization underneath Hadoop, yet you still get the qualities of uh, like agility. So it's a lot of proof points, uh, yeah. and, and, and but but not in, in intense integration, is that because that's just not needed? Or no, you know, we have integration between yeah. our technologies. Can I mean, we have, we have the WHIR project uh, in, in uh, Apache Hadoop right now, and WHIR, W-H-I-R-R, that allows you to easily deploy uh, Hadoop on top of a vCloud solution. You can just point to the vCloud API and say how many nodes you are and then spawn the talk for you. Well, I just want, we have a startup panel coming up next, so it's a great time that we're talking about startups, but I want to ask one final question. Um, and I've been following Cloudera and VMware, you guys, for many, many years, and it's got this, you said system software. I mean, it sounds like operating system, resources, deploying, making things easier. Um, you guys have been very impressive, Amr, by being ahead of the competition, being forward thinking, um, and it seems like this, VMware and your cloud connections is, is a good formula. So what's your vision going forward on, on um, not just a cloud era, but the whole ecosystem of cloud in the next five years? And then Richard, same question to you. <laughs> Uh, what you mean? How? Uh, so, sorry, I'm trying to drive what what you're trying to get to here. But how is this, how is VMware going to evolve, and how is the marketplace going to evolve with commoditization? We're seeing smartphones, we're seeing HP's little challenges they have. All these things are going on in yeah, the marketplace. Yeah. yeah. So one of the key observations I made earlier is about the storage layer, and again, I might be proven wrong there, but my prediction there is. Uh, storage will move away from centralized storage, sp specifically when it comes to uh, data processing or uh, uh, data access heavy applications. Because commodity hardware is bringing down the cost of storage significantly within uh, the, the commodity service. They already have 12 disks, 24 disks on them. So how can we use these disks as opposed to having, uh, go, having to go back to the local storage area network? Because one, these disks are much cheaper. Uh, in terms of access, and then two, the latency to these disks is much better because you don't have to go over multiple network cops or contend on the shared network resource to get to your data. So that's kind of the, my prediction for the next five years. It will we'll see a major shift in how storage is being managed. Will Flash play a role there, do you absolutely, think? Absolutely, absolutely, there's no question. Uh, and, and just a quick follow up and then I'll transit to Richard and he can, you can add this onto the question. Opportunities for startups, um, I'll see your well financed with great angel investors and you know the landscape and it's a lot of white spaces whether it's you know software configuration I mean talking about a, essentially system software meets application software what opportunities for startups do you see out there yeah so I, this one this this one specifically is how to work with uh, virtualization technologies like VMware and others to join the storage layer at the node level with the virtualization layer at the compute level H how to bring these two things together so question, future, how's it evolving, and then opportunities for startups. So two big things in the future. I think um, I'm a hit on the point, local storage will become predominant and virtualization will, uh, will be showing how to exploit local storage for, for Hadoop installations, and that's definitely a trend going on. The cost per gigabyte of storage is like 10x lower at that price point. Um, I think the other future that we'll see, like in the five year time frame, is when we go and talk to big data customers, or data scientists specifically, uh, they typically don't just use Hadoop, they might be using some uh, SAS or R or some um, other code in different languages, PHP. Um, and so what we've been doing in the, in the layers above that is providing, uh, radically simplifying those, simplifying those development environments through platform as a service. So the Cloud Foundry PaaS uh, framework is a really good example about how you can take all that system software out the mix for those language framework developers. I think the same thing will happen for data scientists. You'll be going to a PaaS and you better say, here's my MapReduce, or here's my Hive, or here's my uh, Perl code, or whatever I'm writing in, um, here's my R code, and I can throw that at the PaaS platform and not have to think about spinning up machines or instances or anything behind that. So a radical simplification through PaaS for all the languages that are needed for data science. Yeah, so PaaS actually, if you don't mind, because just remember also, there is lots of opportunity in terms of building solutions on top of this technology wave, right? So a very, a very, uh, interesting example that I met with a couple of days ago is a company called Spy Sky Skybox Technologies. And what Skybox is doing, they're building these commodity satellites, right, very cheap satellites, launching these satellites into space, and then taking images of different locations of the Earth, and then analyzing these images and selling the data that comes out of it. So an example here is, for example, looking at how many cars are parked in front of Home Depot at different times of year. 
that data is very valuable for analysts who are analyzing uh, Home Depot yeah. and also for com competitors who are working against Home Depot. So just an example, there are so many things you can build on top of this technology that I just couldn't think of before. Uh, I mean, I'm just so uh, bullish on big data and just the limit, limitless opportunities. For a business analyst or a younger entrepreneur, computer science, you, don't need a, you shouldn't need a PhD to do <laughs> big data or run cloud. So, uh, you know, democratization of IT, we're talking about a system, systems environment, applications. Uh, guys, thanks a lot for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay. Yep. Richard, Richard McDougall, Amardala, thank you very much. It was great to see you again, great and uh, always a pleasure. Thank you.